guys, welcome back to doing some videos in front of the backdrop and hopefully by my melodramatic title, we know what this video is about. See, Tut is just as upset as I am about this whole Airbnb situation. Now, if you watched any of my other videos before, you'll know that I am all about using that Airbnb. I think that it is a really amazing way to get a good feel of that Japanese lifestyle while traveling to Japan. But unfortunately, rules and regulations have made it so that almost 80% of Tokyo's current Airbnbs have closed down. It's either going to be a temporary thing or it's a permanent thing for these folks who are doing Airbnb because they need to get licensed. So a lot of people, which you should check if you have Airbnb reservations within the next like month or so, you need to make sure that they're still there and active. There's been quite a few videos already posted about this, so I recommend checking them out and doing some research of your own because you don't want to get over there and be like, oh crap, now what do I stay? And <sighs> There's nothing wrong with staying in a hotel when you go to Japan. They're clean, they're nice, the concierge I'm sure is amazing. It's Japanese hospitality, I'm sure it's great. However, the things that are missing are things like the pocket Wi-Fi. Now, not every Airbnb has that, but a lot of them do or did. Also, what's missing is the wash machine in the room, okay? Like, that's so amazing, especially if you're having an extended stay. Having that wash machine right there in your room is great. A lot of hotels, at least in America that is, they'll offer a wash machine room that you have to go down, put quarters in, all that stuff. It's kind of a hassle. In Tokyo, if you stay in an Airbnb, most of them, everyone that we've ever stayed in has had the washing machine and it's so convenient, so great. It makes it so you don't have to pack as much if you don't want to. And like I said, culturally, it's really great to stay in an actual Japanese home. You kind of get the feel and the sense of what an actual day in the life of a Japanese person is like. And I really liked that about Airbnbs. So now trying to book future trips has been a little bit tricky and I've noticed even I've started looking at Airbnbs about a month ago and then I've recently taken it back up just because we may or may not be um, planning a trip I don't know maybe we'll see We'll see. But I've noticed that there's a significant drop in the number of Airbnbs with just in the month. And I suppose that's because the change has happened pretty much in a month. And now going forward, what are you gonna have to do? Well, you're gonna have to look at who is licensed. And a lot of videos that I have already watched about this said that one way is to reach out to the person and ask if they'll provide you a picture of their actual license, which I think is fair to do. I also, maybe I have too much trust in the Japanese people, but I also think that most of the people who are going to put up that they do have a room for rent are going to actually have a room for rent. That's not 100% the case, so make sure you do your research. The places that I have found so far that I've been looking into have had their license on the site, so I feel confident when going to book that these places will be legit. And you always do run the risk when you use a thing like Airbnb that it might not be fully legit, so you have to read reviews just like anywhere else. Read the reviews, do your research, look into it, and then book with caution. Pocky stick break! <laughs> Now Airbnb, like Uber, has been under fire a lot in a lot of different countries. And I understand why there are concerns for multiple reasons. One, safety for the consumer. I definitely think that there have been issues where people in Airbnbs, people in Ubers, things like that, have taken advantage of the system and even like killed people. That's the extreme end of that. And so having some kind of license, having some kind of verification, having some kind of vetting system, I think is good. And I think that that is great for us as consumers. On on a more negative side, which I guess that was negative, but on a more pessimistic side, I feel like a lot of it is because of the hotels complaining. And they're saying that now their profit is hindered because of Airbnb. So it's kind of like, well, hotels, maybe you should step up your game a little bit and stop whining and go do some of the things that the Airbnbs are providing so that people still choose you as an option. <laughs> Duh. Also, I can see how it could create a housing crisis. That's one of the reasons why here in Santa Monica, it is no longer legal to have Airbnbs, which again, it sucks because it's like, you should be able to rent out your own home. It's your house. Like that's something you should be able to do. However, I can see that there'd be a bunch of people who already have a lot of money who are going around buying up property and then causing property prices to increase and making it so that people like us aren't able to live in this area, which actually is already happening because this place has become really popular, but that's beside the point. 
point. So I can see the arguments that are being placed out there, but at the same time, similar with Uber, I think that competition needs to be there to drive everyone else's prices down because without that, we as the consumer lose out because we're paying these huge prices because there's a monopoly on these certain areas. Like the hotels, if you want to get an inexpensive hotel, you're paying for what you get and you're getting like a really crappy hotel oftentimes. Even with some hotels that are $100 a night, you're still going to get really questionable dwelling spaces, which I don't appreciate because I hate being overcharged for something that I feel like I'm uncomfortable in. So I kind of wanted to bring this video into a discussion. I would love for you guys to comment your thoughts in the comments box below. Tell me what you think about this and tell me, would you use Airbnb or would you prefer to stay in a hotel? And what are the pros and cons that you have for these situations? Also, do you think that it's fair that the Tokyo government is putting all this pressure on Airbnb or do you think that there's a different way? I think that having insightful discussions with you guys is always fun. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you loved this video, then put a ring on it and click that bell notification when you hit subscribe. Have a good one, guys. I can't wait to tell you more about our trip to Japan. Maybe, maybe. Oh, see ya. Pocky break. Pocky break.